hello guys welcome back to our channel nigeria is going through so much as a nation uh, there have been issues in lagos issues in obibo issues everywhere and you know most times when these issues come yes there are governors in those states but the legacy always goes down to the presidency and as we speak a lot of the allies of president Muhammad buhari are beginning to talk very 24 hours ago uh, Reverend Father Mbaka, who Mbaka had to open up and speak his mind before Mbaka was always giving Nigerians very strong hope that Buhari is the Messiah. Well, he spoke. Another pastor is speaking, and this time around is very deep. But before we go into the news proper for the analysis, we'd like you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button beside it. You will see a bell notification icon. Please go ahead, click on it to get notified as soon as we update our channel on YouTube. The founder of the Citadel Global Church, Tunde Bakari, has said that President Muhammad Buhari may end up not having any legacy behind after ruling Nigeria as a military and democratically elected president. Bakari, Buhari's running mate for the 2011 presidential election, charged the president to work hard on the legacy that would outlive him. The cleric said, Though Buhari still has enough time to rewrite his name on the sands of time, he is surrounded by a group of very bad counselors. Pastor Bakari, however, noted that that said that said Bakari or that said Buhari can make a difference only if God delivers him from the bad counselors and bad counselors around him. He alleged that bad advisors have prevented the president from seeing and acting on the realities in Nigerian streets. Bakari said this while featuring as a guest on RS Television Morning Show, one of the things I pray for President Muhammad Buhari is that God should deliver him from wicked counsels and counselors who tell him life is sweet and that everything is going fine. But without giving him the report from the streets, he said, in 2015, it seemed as if we had a long time, but four years had gone, and we are into the second year of the second term administration, which is going to end soon. Time is going, and anyone who is thinking of legacy is the best time to go into action. Maybe two or three things which people may see and say in the days of President Buhari, Nigeria took a giant stripe or a giant trip in these three areas. Without that, it will just be like he came twice, first as military head of state and second as democratically elected president, without much being ascribed to him as the achievement of his administration. Wow, that is a very strong one if you ask me. He went further to say that President Mohamed Buhari still has enough time to leave behind an enduring legacy. He can still do a lot between 2021 and 2022 because 2022 or because 2020 is already running out. Wow. Don't forget that Sunday Bakar, who happened to be a clergy and uh, one of the general of senior pastors of uh, the, the above mentioned church, was a running mate of uh, President Mohamed Buhari in 2011. He was the vice president, uh, candidate for vice president in 2011. Although they didn't get, they didn't click the, the they didn't get, they didn't get the uh, slot. But you know, he so to speak, you could say that he understands uh, President Mohamed Buhari's political aspiration to a great extent, and now he's. Obviously, they're beginning to speak up. Before now, Nigerians have been a lot of persons who know what is right but have decided not to speak up for whatever reasons, probably for, for personal affiliation, personal gratification, or not to be termed as saboteur or wanting to appear good. Everybody keeps saying almost the same. All most most colleges who had actually at the early, at the beginning had supported his dreams or supported his aspiration are now beginning to speak up, and they all seem to have the same uh, um, similar uh, analogies, similar analysis on this matter, and that is bad cancer. That's probably the same thing, uh, just a different words was actually used by Father Mbaka. 
EJK father, Reverend Father EJK Mbaka, where he said that uh, President Mahmoud Buhari has surrounded himself with a um, certified license, li NAVDAC certified liars, those who are around him, who are counseling him and giving him lies, they're not telling the truth. While uh, uh, Pastor Tunde Bakare kind of polished his own words just a little better by saying, you know, this is, to me, just more English, but it's actually the meanings are the same. Okay, he's not saying that, look, he has bad counselors. He doesn't want to call anybody liars, but just saying, okay, these guys are bad counselors. They don't want to tell him the true reality of what is going on in the streets, on the streets of Nigeria, on the streets of Lagos, on the street of Bruno, on the street of... Um, uh, on the street of Imo, on the street of Anambra, on the street of Oshun, on the street of Ibadan, uh, on the street of everywhere in Nigeria, there is something going on. But they keep giving that impression that, oh, President, you're doing well, the people are happy with you. Until this NSAS saga, the protest, blew on all our faces, then we now realize maybe all wasn't well after all. And then while he's a, a bit more modest in the use of words, Father Mbaka was really raw. And his use of us look, there's nothing like bad counselors, anything. These guys are not just liars, but they are magnified, certified liars, liars that have NAVDAC stamp on it, which means they are registered, they are licensed to lie. And it's a very serious matter. These are things we kept on saying, and then that you talk this, and look at now the try to work on the um, social media bill. And that's the same social media bill that uh, uh, the, the GO, General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, is saying in one of the interviews, one of the uh, one of his statements, he said, look, don't try to imbibe uh, the China method of um, regulating the social media. You know, in China, I don't think you have access to Google, okay, but they don't allow that. They, they regulated the social media because the terrain in China is not the terrain in Nigeria. So you cannot begin to take the good part and leave the other part. China has everything complete. I would explain. They are also, uh, they frowned strongly against corruption. And they have laws and policies that is against corrupt practices. If you go looting, you're not sure to come up. But I think the minimum for them, the uh, minimum years is about 100 years. Or even life imprisonment. Do we have such in Nigeria? We've had stories of what happened in NEDC, how billions, I'm not talking about millions, I'm talking about billions of Naira, how they said they, they've got awarded contract, it was not executed. We They talked about it, hey, we're going to form a panel. Panel was formed, a lot of terrible things were said, how the monies in Nigeria were being looted. Who, one person had been prosecuted? None. We keep hearing it was alleged, it was alleged, it was alleged, it has not been proved. Now it is swept under the carpet. That particular matter is no longer trending. It has been forgotten. Those monies have been, it has, it's now, you know, money now that is now a personalized money now. Nobody's asking questions anymore. And you are now saying that you will leave that part of the constitution you leave, and only concentrate only on either water bill and social media you keep talking about fake news is there any country of the world that have not suffered one thing or the other on fake news and let's give a scenario about this whole issue of fake news and the rest don't forget that when you say fake news desmond elliott would have gone away and called that young doctor dr chris or so he would have said that man brought fake news but not for the video that vindicated that man it would have been called 10 fake news so let's be real to ourselves right now a lot needs to be done by this administration nigerians are not happy uh, we they keep trying to churn out monies. Uh, uh, this uh, amnesty, is it amnesty? Is it the uh, at the some money? This money, this money. After you finish giving them that money for three months, what happens? There is no economic viability. There has to be continuity. You don't just give people okay, see now end power. After two years, and people will be you know churned out. They're back to the labor market. These things are uh, 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 quick fixes. They won't in the long run help Nigerians. They're just giving a quick fix, quick, quick fix. Let's just solve this one sharp, sharp, so that they will not stop. Long, do economic things, the economic plans that have a long run effect and that will make Nigerians proud. Start with security. 
You can't go, you are telling people you to go to the farm. They are not even secure. Fulani has been having a few days. You can imagine how can a Kekarada be going and one, one person from the north will stab him. I don't really know the total story of the whole thing. That's why we've not carried that particular news. And somebody stabs him and he's having a few days. He has not been brought to book. These are the insecurities we are talking about. Nigeria is a long way from recovering. I do not know the, the, the wisdom they will go about this, but I tell you, just like every other persons are saying, they need to really buckle up and look inward and begin to feel the pulse of Nigeria and see how they can put, put Nigeria in the right direction and the right track. Not quick fixes, but permanent and slow and steady recovery from our economy and security issues. That's what we're going to wrap it up. Let's meet in our conversation. What's the take on what Pastor Bakari, Tinder Bakari, is saying concerning uh, the presidency? and why